Hello, comic fans. Here's Earl Grey, or rather too much coffee man, I suppose. Cheers. Mm. Do you say cheers when you drink coffee? I don't know. Um, recently, I did a video about abstract comics. Uh, unfortunately, almost not at all about Jesse Jacobs, but I included uh, this cover here in the video and in the thumbnail. And some commentaries went into that direction. Hey, I live, uh, love or like Jesse Jacobs. Uh, comic Crack in particular posted a video about a video game or a computer game made by Jesse Jacobs uh, using the spectral colors here. Uh, the idea behind the game is to feed uh, you have to feed the colors if you want uh, to see the game go on Comic Crack's channel. But I figured, hey, let's do a video uh, about Jesse Jacobs. Uh, and since uh, one of his publishers, Hollow Press, the Italian uh, publisher Hollow Press, put out a new book and I ordered uh, some new stuff uh, from them, I will talk a bit later on in the video about these books from Hollow Press as well. So stay tuned. As to Jesse Jacobs, he is uh, included in this collection of one pages, firstly published in a magazine called Le Monde Diplomatique. Um, it's a very interesting uh, book for itself here. Each cartoonist slash artist has one page where or, uh, he or she can does pretty much whatever she or he wants to do with it. Um, Jesse Jacobs did uh, for him a pretty usual uh, page. Uh, as you, and as you can see here, it contains already a lot of these uh, tropes that are very typical for Jesse Jacobs. Um, this dualism between chaos and order, between individuality and supreme forces that are way above the heads of the protagonists and uh, above us readers. This dualism is, of course, very prominent and important in Crawl Space, uh, published by Koyama Press, uh, in which um, in the beginning, two kids uh, walk into some washing machines and uh, experience some druggish out there experiences, colorful experiences. Uh, very simple and effectful at the same time. Simple because it's just, in quotes, uh, the colors of the spectrum, uh, the rainbow colors, if you will. So um, you have always blue, green, yellow, orange, and, and so on. Um, it's very strict in that way, but uh, nevertheless it can get pretty complex, like in these old arcade games uh, like uh, panels here. So it's no surprise that uh, Jesse Jacobs worked at the same time or in about the same time at this uh, computer game that I mentioned. So, uh, this is not only about the, these two worlds, the real world, which is drawn in black and white, and the uh, world within these uh, uh, washing machines here, but it's about uh, betrayal and how this betrayal can spoil this um, wonderful secret that these two girls shared actually in the beginning. Uh, but the whole setup, of course, with these washing machines and so on, this is pretty goofy uh, and in a way a bit uh, from the point of storytelling, a bit hard to swallow, uh, at least with the first reading. When I read the story here again, I really liked it even a bit better. Uh, it's always a fascinating story for me, but maybe not and still not my favorite one of um, Jesse Jacobs. In terms of favorites, uh, when it comes to Jesse Jacobs, I would recommend to pick up one of these two here, Safari Honeymoon or uh, By This Shawl You Know Him, uh, both published by Koyama Press. I mean, obviously I can uh, recommend each and every book by Jesse Jacobs, but in these two books, for different reasons, uh, his special blend of artwork and storytelling works best. By this, shall you know him, is basically a um, creation story, Genesis 2.0, if you will, uh, with some uh, gods, and they do what gods uh, do. They create structures and space 
and of course creatures um, like these weird out Adam and Eve uh, characters here and we can even see Abel and Cain even though they are not uh, called uh, with these names here. But there's a unity to um, these different tropes of uh, Jesse Jacobs, of these this cosmic stuff that is way beyond our grasp uh, above our heads. And on the other hand, we have these mundane characters living their everyday life. This blends very seamlessly uh, in this uh, story here with the cosmic stuff. In Safari Honeymoon, we have again a bigger picture and an actual story within this frame here. Um, the actual story is about this couple doing their holidays on an alien planet. And the, this alien planet is a sort of the frame or bigger picture uh, because we have a lot of stuff that is beyond our grasp, maybe a bit. But on the other hand, uh, it's not so far out that we can't uh, comprehend it because it's uh, toxic plants and critters that can eat you from one second to the other. And the story can be read as well as a set satire on uh, tourism on our today Earth because it's actually, when you think about it, not so much different, even though this is, of course, way more fantastic and even though if it deals with critters that can go into your ears and, and uh, stuff li li like that, uh, it's, it's a big, big fun read, of course. As I saw that there's a new book out uh, by Jesse Jacobs, published by um, Hollow Press, I went a bit wild uh, in, uh, on their offerings. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning. So a huge box arrived here and uh, a side of other material, which will I talk about in a second. There's this new book here by Jesse Jacobs, Baby in the Boneyard. And this is maybe not uh, the kind of book that you should have uh, lying around on your table when new neighbors visit your house because they will think, what weirdo lives close to us? And when they start flipping through the book here, uh, it won't change their mind, I'm afraid. <laughs> Even though this is a great start for a book here, uh, for this book here, and just to calm your nerves a bit, uh, the baby here is not the victim, not at all. Um, again, we have a bit of a cosmic background that I always find very typical for a Jesse Jacobs story. Some stuff that is above your our head, like I said. And here we have the baby. Uh, it's raised by these creatures that are pretty tender uh, to uh, to it because they themselves can only procreate by division. Uh, like cell division, uh, they duplicate. Um, and uh, so uh, having a baby is pretty unusual for them, but they take care of the baby. <laughs> and that's ba basically the gist of the story here. But look at this page here. I want to have this one as a poster here. And as always with Holopress, the printing qualities are um, amazing and the paper stock here is almost cardboard. So yeah, it's really amazing how they can do that, uh, especially when you think that these print runs are always very small. This one here has only uh, 1000 copies, which is almost a bigger print run for them. They have uh, some editions that have only 100 or 150 copies. And they released uh, this book here by Jesse Jacobs as well. They live in me with cardboard covers. They're really thick cardboard covers. You can almost build a house on them. Uh, or with them, which is fitting because it is about houses and housing with a short introduction by Noah Van Skyver. Very short introduction, but uh, some interesting ins insights of him. 
because this is a very ambiguous story about this house here um, being some kind of a living entity and uh, people visit the house and strange things will happen to them. I could think of this story uh, as some old EC or creepy story, um, but then the whole story would look very differently. And you can see that Jesse Jacobs style works in black and, white, uh, black and white as well, of course. So, highly recommended, like everything Holopress does or Jesse Jacobs does. But let's, let us now put all the Jesse Jacobs stuff aside and go for the second part of my video, which will be devoted to other stuff by Holopress. And I guess I don't have to tell you uh, what big of a fan I am of Tetsunori Tavaraya. I talked about his stuff on my older Holopress video and I even did a separate video uh, only devoted about uh, his comics and even some of his CD covers and, and stuff like that. And, uh, an art book. So when I saw uh, that Holopress is offering this oversized um, new book of him, um, Assassin Child, on plaque paper, the same deal uh, as within these a bit older ones here. Uh, the silvery special color printed on plastic-like paper, which shimmers and shines um, depending ho how the light can be reflected. So it has really uh, nice effects here. I uh, hope you can see it. Uh, so when I saw it that this kind of stuff here in, in again, in oversized, <laughs> uh, then I, yeah, the decision was made. I have to get new stuff from Holopress and uh, bought the, the rest uh, of the books that you uh, will see in a minute, along with Jesse Jacobs new book, of course. And as usual, the stories from Mr. Tavaraya, the art is clearly the driving force here. While the story has to take the back seat and is a bit confusing and you don't always know what Mr. Tavaraya will actually try to tell you, but uh, you will read the story again and again and uh, will come with more proper solutions or um, ideas about uh, the idea itself. So it's just fantastic fun and, and I like these, these kind of stories that are very convoluted and dense and very lighthearted uh, at the same time. Lighthearted despite of the grim themes and subjects here, of course. I mean, who can really have the heart and doesn't like stuff like this here? In my opinion, acquiring this book here alone made uh, the whole order worthwhile. But on top of it, I got books from uh, Spunja and uh, even more interesting from Matt Brinkman. I'm, I mean, I've read uh, stories from Matt Brinkman before in the anthology series from Holopress and I've shown you uh, these stories before in my older video but this here really blew me away I mean not only in terms of production qualities this thing here is huge uh, and very well printed on thick paper but when you're a fan of Gary Panther or Brian Chippendale's a very special kind of um, doing comics, then this book here is a no-brainer for you. Like almost all of the stuff from Holopress, again, it's not about the stories that here uh, are here conveyed, but about the energy and the naivety in a positive way of creating, um, yeah, 
fun panels that may or may not mesh into some kind of story or universe and uh, some art is drawn incredibly detailed and small or uh, only just reproduced in a bigger fashion here to create some kind of dynamics onto these um, pages here. They were uh, um, formally published in a, a zine called Paper Rodeo. Uh, he did, I believe, together with the aforementioned Brian Chippendale. So, uh, no coincidence that the style here is pretty reminiscent of uh, the this, this guy, Chippendale, and Gary Panther, of course. So really, this is great if you're in into this kind of thing. And in the back we have some afterword done by one Frank Santoro and reprints of the original art in its original size, which is pretty interesting because it obviously was just pencils uh, uninked. Um, and it's great to look at some examples, even though I would maybe have preferred to look at more actual of the fantastic uh, multi-force comics. So maybe they just had to fill some pages and it's fine with me. Highly recommended book. Don't know, uh, I'm not so sure about this uh, stuff here, little booklets with some excerpts from the multi-force multi world. The last guy I want to talk about today is uh, the Italian Spugna and this here is maybe his magnum opus, The Rust Kingdom, with some embossed uh, title on the cover. It's a post-apocalyptic tale, very colorful as you can see here, in which um, brutish creatures kill off each other in very ridiculous manners. Um, you will have seen uh, stuff like this before, but maybe not in this over-the-top manner. Uh, it has a bit of Kirby and it has a bit of everything uh, that makes comics reading uh, so fun. Sometimes, I might mean, it's good to have your high-level graphic novels, but sometimes you will have a simple outlet like this. It's maybe a splatterpunk version of this image book called Headlopper, even though Headlopper has way more uh, details and intricate plotting to it. Uh, in comparison to uh, this book here. Maybe a cross between Headlopper and Johnny Ryan's Prison Pit. This is a fairly good description in my opinion. So if you like stuff like that, you can't go very wrong with this book here. I mean, you will be through with this book uh, in half an hour, but because it's almost silent, uh, but this half uh, half an hour will be well spent. I'm not so sure about these two books here. Um, like the title says, uh, they are Rust Kingdom tales as well, but just thinner contributions that add one detail or two uh, to this tale here. I found the wizard head a bit more interesting because uh, it gives you some insights where one of the guys in the Rust Kingdom comes from. Um, this is pretty interesting and this wizard head in itself is a yeah, weird invention. Nothing that you haven't seen before, but uh, good comic fun in a way. Gnomi side, yeah, it's uh, as the title suggests, gnomes being killed off by some other entities and in the end they will kill each other uh, 
Oh, spoilers. And this is a bit even Indiana Jones woven into it. Yeah. Don't know if you need these books here, but I highly can recommend The Rust Kingdom, Matt um, Brinkman's Multiforce Oversized Museum Edition, they call it. And of course, uh, Assassin Child by Tetsunori Tawaraya and The Baby in the Boneyard from Jesse Jacobs. So that's uh, all for now. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.